Do you ever wonder why you can't stop eating even when you're full? Today, we're diving into a fascinating study that challenges conventional wisdom about weight control and appetite. Get ready to learn how surprise results of this study can change your entire relationship with food. So keep watching to find out. Without further ado, my name is Jeremy Cologne, and this is The Dark Side of Fitness, episode 62. Thank you for joining me today. Welcome to my channel. We focus on transforming your body from the inside out. Suppose you're ready to take your fitness journey to that next level. Like this video, subscribe to my channel for more whole body transformation content. What determines how many calories you eat? That's the million dollar question a new study set out to answer, or at least learn more about. Turns out most of the findings weren't surprising. They were exactly what you expect. The scientists report that energy density, hyperpalatable foods, and eating rate were consistently related to calorie intake. But there was one head scratcher and involved protein. Intrigue? Let's take a look. Here's what you need to know about protein. For most of the 21st century, it's been a matter of faith that a higher protein meal increases both satiations, so you feel full faster, and satiety, so you feel full longer between meals. More satiety means that you eat less at your next meal or you wait longer between meals, either of which can help you with weight control. This is why protein has become a go-to recommendation for folks trying to manage their weight and or better control their appetite. It's also worth noting, in my coaching experience, eating more protein is very helpful for these people, regardless of the mechanism. How the study worked. The authors begin with data from two experiments conducted by researchers at the U.S. National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Disease. In the first study, participants were given diets with unprocessed and ultra-processed aka hyperpalatable foods for 14 days each. The diets were balanced, offering a mix of macronutrients. In the second study, participants ate low-fat and low-carb diets with the same 14 days each. While both diets used minimally processed foods, the low-fat diet was plant-based and the low-carb diet was animal-based. Both studies, which included 2,733 meals from these four meal patterns, were ad libitum. That is, participants ate as much as they wanted in each meal. For this study, the researchers looked at how four dietary variables affected both satiation and satiety. Energy density, number of calories per gram of food, hyperpalatable content, percentage of calories from hyperpalatable foods, eating rate, grams of food consumed per minute, protein content, percentage of calories from protein. I do want to make a note that the authors consider foods hyperpalatable if they contain combinations of nutrients, especially sugar, fat, and salt that don't occur in nature. All hyperpalatable foods are ultra processed, but not all ultra processed foods are hyperpalatable. That designation is reserved for foods engineered to be eaten quickly and mindlessly, bypassing the body satiety mechanisms. Here's what the study found. Under satiation, satiation describes feelings of fullness when you're eating. So if a meal or food isn't very satiating, you'll likely eat more. As you expect, three factors were linked to higher food consumption in all four meal patterns higher energy density, greater proportion of hyperpalatable foods, and faster eating rate. But here's the surprise. Protein was associated with eating in two of the four diets, the ones with balanced fat and carbs. One of those diets used ultra processed foods while the others used mostly minimally processed foods. And in the two other diets, low carb and low fat, a meal's protein content was associated with slightly less consumption, but the effect was negligible. Both of those diets use minimally processed foods. For satiety, satiety is how you feel between meals. The amount of food someone eats at one meal would affect how much they eat at their next meal on the same day. So if someone has a light lunch, you'll expect them to be hungrier and eat more. But if they chow down at lunch, they'll probably be less hungry at dinner. And that's indeed what happened for three of the meal patterns. But with the ultra processed diet, calorie intake at one meal didn't seem to affect how much they ate at the next one. This brings us to the study's real shocker. For the low carb and low fat diets, protein intake at one meal was associated with higher calorie intake at the next meal. Both of those diets, as we noted, use minimally processed foods. Conversely, on the ultra processed diet, protein had the expected effect on satiety. Eating more protein at one meal meant fewer total calories consumed at the next one. The effect was negligible for the unprocessed diet. If all of this is hard to keep track of, I agree with you. 
This isn't an easy study to understand. There are four different diets and several factors to account for. It's a lot to keep track of in your head. And as I said, the results concerning protein aren't what we would have expected, but it's not just us here. The protein effects in this study were surprising and confusing because high protein diets are considered particularly satiating. We've uncovered the hidden factors that influence our appetite and food choices, but the expertise we're about to share will take your understanding to that next level. So please keep watching to find out how to transform your relationship with food. Here are some expert coaching takeaways for this study. Number one, protein isn't a get out of the weight gain freight card. Most of what we know about protein is still true. It has a higher thermic effect than carbs or fat, meaning you burn more calories when digesting it. It's vital for building and repairing muscle tissue. It provides a pool of anemo acids, which your body uses to create hormones and replaces worn out cells. According to this research, the one thing it may need to do better as we fought is to increase the tidy between meals. That said, the diet experiments used in the study weren't originally designed to examine satiety. The researchers conducted this analysis based on data from their previous research. That limits what we can take away from it, especially when we compare it to previous studies on the topic. The researchers are already working on new studies to see the findings hold up. The bottom line here is nothing in this study about protein should change the way you eat. Eating more protein is still helpful. Don't depend on protein alone to prevent you from eating more calories than you need for your goals. Number two, two factors matter the most. Energy density and a proportion of hyperpalatable foods have the most powerful effects on how much you eat at any meal. Foods with the most fat, nine calories per gram will have the highest energy density. Some are treats like pastries, which you wanna minimize when focusing on weight management, but some have a legitimate role in a healthy dietary pattern. A short list would include nuts and nut butter, avocados, eggs, olive oil, cheese, and other dairy products. Hyperpalatable foods present a different dilemma though. We're talking primarily about things you buy in the snack food aisle or pick up from a drive through window because they rarely offer much nutritional benefit and they're often energy dense as well. The trick here is to weigh whatever pleasure they offer against the calories you'll consume. Maybe it's worth it or maybe not. Number three, eating rate can affect how you consume too. How fast you eat has less influence on calorie consumption than energy density or the proportion of hyperpalatable foods but the effect is consistent across different types of diets. This suggests that no matter what eating pattern you prefer, it should work better for weight loss if you slow down. As we conclude, I wanna say, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Your support means the world to me. That's the reason why I continue to make valuable content like this for you. So if you wanna to continue to see content like this, please like, subscribe, hit that bell icon so you never miss out on amazing expert coaching tips like this. And until next time, see you in the next video. Thank you.